welcome students in this demonstration video of an undergraduate physical chemistry practical entitled ph metric titration of dibasic acid against strong base in our case we have chosen oxalic acid as the dibasic acid and sodium hydroxide as the strong base now this video has been divided into three segments in the first segment we will discuss the basic theory and the principle in the second segment we will discuss how to perform this experiment in the laboratory and finally we will plot the data using excel and find out the results so let's start now objective of this experiment is to determine the strength of the supplied dibasic acid solutions as well as to determine the pk2 value of the dibasic acid We all know that oxalic acid is a dibasic acid because it has two replaceable hydrogen atoms. Therefore, this oxalic acid dissociates into two steps like this. Here, K1 and K2 are the dissociation constant of the first and the second steps respectively. And when we will titrate this oxalic acid against NaOH, we should get two equivalence point. Now when we will titrate this oxalic acid against sodium hydroxide from the beginning up to the first equivalence point in the beaker there will be unreacted oxalic acid and monosodium oxalate. Similarly between the first and the second equivalence point in the beaker there will be monosodium oxalate and disodium oxalate. This monosodium oxalate is still acidic because it has 1C double OH group. It is weakly acidic and disodium oxalate is a salt. So this weak acid along with this salt will constitute a buffer. Now determination of pH for a buffer is done with help of Henderson equation. We all know that. Which says pH is equals to pKa plus log concentration of salt by concentration of acid. In our case, the salt is the disodium oxalate and the acid is the monosodium oxalate. Now if n be the number of drops of sodium hydroxide added at any instant, n1 be the number of drops of sodium hydroxide added up to first equivalence point and n2 be the number of drops of sodium hydroxide required for final equivalence, then it can be shown that pH is equals to pK2 plus log the salt concentration will be proportional to N minus N1 and the acid concentration will be proportional to N2 minus N. If we plot pH against this logarithmic term, we will get a straight line with positive slope and the intercept will give us the pK2 value. And for plotting, we need to know N2 and N1. So, how can we have this N1 and N2 value that will be discussed in the last segment. Now, the steps involved in these experiments are preparation of standard oxalic acid solution, number two, titration of supplied sodium hydroxide solution using standard oxalic acid solution and phenolphthalein as indicator so that the strength of the supplied sodium hydroxide can be determined. Next we have to wash the combined glass electrode of pH meter. Then we have to standardize the pH meter. Then pH metric titration followed by drop calibration. Now 
the first one that is the preparation of standard oxalic acid solution and the fourth one that is standardization of pH meter has not been discussed in this video otherwise the video will be too long. Now this is a image of pH meter. Let us take a close look. You can see a digital display is there, a temperature controller, a calibration knob and a mode knob. Now this temperature controller and calibration knob these are required for the standardization purpose. When we are determining the pH the mode knob should be at this pH mark. Now this is a combined glass electrode and when not in use this electrode is dipped into a 4 pH solution. We can see a filling port is there in this electrode through which we can add KCL solution. One silver silver chloride reference electrode is there inside the glass electrode. At the tip there is a thin glass membrane containing 0.1 molar HCL solution. So now let's plot the data. You can see the number of drops of NOH data are there, corresponding pH values are there. So first we have to calculate the mean number of drops.
Now double clicking at the right button corner, we will get all the values. Similarly, DPH, DN values can be calculated. Once again, by double clicking at the right bottom corner, you can get all the values. Now let's plot this data. Now this is our graph. I'm deleting these grid lines. And we can see uh, the peak corresponds to the second equivalence point. Now we should put the access title for that we have to go to the layout section access title and primary horizontal axis. It will be the mean number of drops. So this is the plot and you see that uh, for determining the second equivalence point we don't need to plot this thing because just looking at the data you can determine the second equivalence point. You see the DPH DN is maximum here at 36.5 the value is 3.89 which is the maximum so it is the second equivalence point. So we don't need to plot these things. So if 36.5 is the second equivalence point, then the first equivalence will be half of that. Now we have already discussed that Henderson equation is applicable in between the first and second equivalence point. And first equivalence point is obtained at 18.25. So beyond 18 drops, the section is actually applicable for buffer equations. I'm highlighting this section. Okay. Now we will use Henderson equation for this section only. We have to calculate this log value. Ten base logarithm n n here is the twenty one minus n one which is eighteen point two five. Now since this value is constant, so we have to put dollar sign n2 uh, it is also constant so dollar sign should be given here also minus n again okay now let's plot the ph and the log Now you know that in Excel the first column is chosen as X axis and the second column is chosen as Y axis by default that is the B axis is the X axis here and G axis is the Y axis here uh, but according to the equation pH should be along Y axis and this log value should be along X axis so what should we do we will select the points right click and then we will go to the select data section then edit section and we will 
change the x column and y column here for x values we are choosing the g column and for y values we are choosing b column okay this is the plot i'm deleting these things the grid lines also and see the last two points are deviating much from the linearity uh, so we can delete these two points from the data table okay so now we will add a trend line click the display equation and the display r squared values uh, so we are getting the equations and you can see from this equation the intercept which is actually pk2 is 4.0862 so this is the final plot of our experiment now we have to give the axis title So this is our final plot. So finally, how the strength of the supplied oxalic acid solution is calculated? You see during drop calibration, suppose 50 drops of NaOH has volume of 2.5 milliliter, then one drop of NaOH will have volume 0.05 milliliter. Now if 36.5 drops are required for second equivalence point then it corresponds to 1.825 milliliter of sodium hydroxide so we have taken oxalic acid 10 milliliter sodium hydroxide 1.825 milliliter and NMH strength is 0.523 normal and this strength has been determined uh, from the titer value using the phenolphthalein indicated titration so strength of the dibasic acid will be 0 0.0925 normal. So finally we get the strength of the supply dibasic acid as 0 0.0925 normal and the pk2 value of the dibasic acid as evident from the excel plot is 4.086.